Welcome back to an Acres for the end of the month garden stroll. It's a comfortable 80 degrees today and we're actually getting some rain to come through. We just had a few showers and now I'm trying to get this garden stroll in before the next shower comes. I'll take all the rain we can get. So I haven't mentioned it much this year, but this is the little patio pond that I put together. It does have two Shabunkin goldfish in here. And I haven't mentioned it too much because I usually redo it each year, but I haven't had the time for an upgrade. So it's just been running as is and it's actually been doing really well out here. It's actually full up on floating plants right now. This is Echo Pup's outdoor watering bowl. Hump up. And they're hard to see, but there is two Shabunkins in here that are still alive. They survived all through the winter. No, that's a little ceramic frog. But I just left that little waterfall pump running all winter long. This pond actually froze solid, probably four inches on top. And no problem with the fish, they're still in there doing well. I don't even feed those fish in there. Being an outdoor body of water, it gets bugs in there, the mosquito larvae and some other stuff. So that's what they're feeding on, as well as grazing on the algae that grows. The shabunkins are part of the goldfish family and the goldfish are part of the carp family just like koi are. And goldfish and koi pretty much eat like cows. They just graze all day long. Here on the steps, we keep having these snapdragons that just volunteered here from seeds that were left over from last year. They just re-sprouted on their own, so we call them volunteers. And they just keep re-blooming here on the steps, even the ones that came up in the cracks. I don't even water any of these. It's all up to Mother Nature. This whole corner is actually full of volunteers. We have the coxcomb coming up here, as well as the bleeding heart amaranth. The amaranth is gorgeous, and it's a really nice contrast with this coxcomb. I'm so glad it volunteered here. It's really holding the pond edging together along with the volunteer zinnias going around the edge of the gravel. It's pretty much the only reason I have color over here, except for the kaleidoscope budlia bush next to the greenhouse. Gorgeous. Mom balls. She had her wings out running. Beautiful bird. I do have Dabbles' gate open, so he can come out once he finds his open gate. I don't chase him out, I just let him find it on his own. One really nice feature that we have now is the windmill. I've been really liking the view of that. A kind viewer was nice enough to send this in, and I got it there on the end of the garden. And I think that's the perfect spot for it. And we can actually see it now because I pulled out the willow that was growing here in the intake bay. Hold on fishies, I didn't bring you any feed. Now that I've been feeding the goldfish and the koi, every time I come up to the edge of the pond, they're here to greet me. We got Goldie Hawn, Dorothy, Yang, and I don't see the orange koi. There you are. You're hiding because I didn't give you a name yet. But I had to pull that clump of willow out. It was just getting way too big. It actually had the chance of piercing the liner with the roots. I don't think that happened, but I did have to cut a lot of the root ball off so I could get it out. And I ended up planting it on the edge of the field pond out there. Like I said, I cut a lot of the root ball off, so I'm not sure if that's going to take off out there. But I am going to try and keep that watered so it has a chance. Oh, I think Dabbles just found the gate. He's out. Dabbles is free. I don't know why he wants to go uphill into the house. Come out into the field, bud. You're free ranging. Hold on, fishies. I'll feed you at the end. Over here on the pond bank, we have another butterfly bush still blooming. This is the Pugster butterfly bush. It's supposed to stay a little bit more compact, but I think I'm going to have to prune that here in the fall. We have a bumblebee on there. Still a lot of things for the pollinators to do out here. We have the volunteer cosmos blooming there. Oh, the geyser. There she is. Sucking in all that rainwater that we got earlier and putting it into the pond. If you don't know, this downspout right here coming off this half of the house all goes into a pit that I have at the back of the beach. And then once that pit fills up, a float valve trips and that's what pumps the geyser water into the pond. It just helps top the pond off from all the evaporation that we get each day. And also all the groundwater that comes in around the edge of the pond. There's a French drain that I have running the whole length of the pond all the way up the stream. And that French drain also runs to the back of the intake bay where I have the pit. And it all collects at the same spot the rainwater does and gets pumped in via the geyser. I call it a functional feature. Yeah, I think the fish are following me. But I want to take a look at the waterfall because it's looking really natural right now. I haven't done a lot to it. It's just been growing some algae on it. And the creeping jenny has really been coming over the rocks on the edges. Really just blending the edges of the rock work, making it look like it's coming right out of the ground. At least I think so. But really, the one thing that got rid of all the string algae that I typically have in this pond is dabbles and the ducks were in here for a while, and they ate the majority of it. You can see I have a little tuff right there. But the goldfish and the koi eat a lot of it too, so once dabbles and the ducks came through and ate the majority of it, I think the koi and the goldfish are keeping up with it now. Oh, he's out in the open. 
What are you doing, bud? You're missing some ducks. The boy duck and Hermione up there still in the pen. Uh oh. Oh, you acting all mean, bud. Keep your neck up. Quit being mean. Don't make me come out there, dabbles. I jumped over the pond barefoot the other day whenever a hawk was swooping the birds. Now my feet hurt. Hey, dabbles. You be nice. Echo pup's gonna chaperone. Got my eye on you, boy. Yeah, you. Keep an eye on them, pup. But yeah, everything over here at the pond area that looks good is all volunteers. The zinnias, the amaranth, the coxcomb, snapdragons. We have the oxalis is actually a perennial. That's still blooming. The purple triangularis oxalis is actually a really sturdy perennial. We've came through this bank with a rototiller a couple years ago, and it just keeps coming right back. I like it here. It's a slow spreader. The creeping jenny is actually a little bit faster. But it has a nice little light purple bloom here, and I think the bees like it. It's actually all over the bachelor button, which is also another volunteer right here. Like I said, everything is. Even that seemingly perfectly placed porch alaca next to the waterfall. Both of them volunteer, red and yellow, side by side with that lupin grown in the middle. Just gorgeous. There's still some work to do around these waterfalls covering up the edging, but it's a process. Dabbles, you chasing my birds out? What are you doing, guys? Why don't you give him space? He has to run a he has to run in front of his ducks to save them. That's a good feature, bud. But they're all your ducks. Why don't you all go back to the pond? Dabbles. Quit chasing, just go back to the pond. You bunch of birds, behave. Hold on, pup, don't scare them. Dabbles, you have to get used to all these ducks being around you, bud. You're one big flock now. No. Dabbles, don't go after maple like that. Got to get used to the other ducks being around. Mumbles, don't just take your click, girl. <laughs> He's like, I'm out of here. All right, you behave, birds. The windmill's looking good out here, even though we didn't get the cut flower garden planted this year. I have a lot of ideas. Not all of them pan out each year. I got my eye on you. Come on, pup. We're going to head out front real quick. We do have some nice blooms out here with the limelight hydrangeas. But first, here in the side garden, we do have some sedum coming into color, and the bumblebees, they already found it. Hi, little fella. They love these tiny, intricate flowers. Just a working, aren't you? So there's not a lot of color here in the side garden, but we still have some gladiolas even blooming back there. What are you doing? Dabble. Mumbles, don't go up a cliff. Take it easy, girl. Oh, you bird. Well, I keep getting distracted by dabbles out there, but we do have some more rain coming. But over here in the front garden, we do have some hydrangeas blooming. This one here closest is a bobo hydrangea, and then the row out here are limelight hydrangeas. I used to have hollies planted in between them, but the deer ate the hollies. And this year they have pretty small heads and that's because they have a lot of flowers on them. If I were to prune this to have less branches producing flowers, each flower head would be bigger. And they were a lot bigger last year. 
You can tell this one's a little bit slower, but they already have the paint coming in. They autumn off with this nice pink color, and usually they go full bright white first like these ones, but some of these are already putting on the pink without opening fully. Interesting. Over here in the corner next to the bird bath, we have the blue jean baby Russian sage blooming. This is actually a smaller, more compact Russian sage. Still a lot of nice fragrance on them though. And I believe this right here is the Joe Pie weed. It actually looks pretty good. Behind it is that poke weed though. That's not great. But I think there are some English gardens that have more of a cottage feel. They actually use this Joe Pie weed over there. Here it's typically treated as a weed. It's nice to see my oak leaf hydrangea is still alive. The deer have been trying to eat this thing down to nothing. So I'm really gonna have to try and protect this early spring now. The Empress is beautiful too. Up here in the top of the front garden, we have some more gladiolas blooming, pink ones this time. And these ones out here are perennial. I don't dig these up in the fall. They just stay in the ground the whole time. So they've been getting bigger and better each year. And we're still getting some color over here on the Dianthus. This right here is actually a standard Russian sage and it should be a lot bigger, but I accidentally weed whacked it in the spring. At least I got some blooms off of her. Also out in the front we have the crepe myrtle, which is really vibrant right here behind the farm stand. It's kind of small right now and it's only a medium tree, but I'm hoping it gets just taller than the farm stand is, so it's just peeking up above the roof. And it has a really nice vibrant color to it. I think they call it the dynamite red crepe myrtle. And we also have the chameleon ground cover filling out nicely. And you can see why they call it chameleon, because it's autumning off in different shades of color. Up, oh, pop. Trying to cool down, bud. Good boy. That's your spot. All for you, pup. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna head up to the pergola and check out the beautiful blooms up here. Oh, the guys are. Dabble's doing. I hear him squawking. I see ducks running. What are you doing, big birds? Dabbles. You be nice to Mumbles. Quit chasing him. There's plenty of space, bud. Oh, he's chasing Duke. Every time Duke tackles one of the girls for boy things, Dabbles chases him down knocks him off. There's rules to the flock, bud. You can't pick on everybody. Duke's got to do what Duke's got to do to the ducks. Huh, bud? Huh, Duke? That's your duck. All right, he's gonna go claim the pond, I think. You good, Mumbles? What are you doing, Mumbles? You over there with the baby snowballs? All right. What happened, girl? Did you fall asleep standing up? Everybody left, girl. You're gonna have to go catch up. Yep. Go ahead, <laughs> catch up girl. All right, pop back to the pergola. Real quick though, on the back of the island here, we have the bamboo marigold. I believe this is Tithonia maxifolia or something like that. It's actually supposed to be a lot bigger, but it's getting taken over by that forsythia and this volunteer poplar tree. That big old tree needs to get taken out of there. Huh, pop. How you doing, giraffe? We have the eye catching and the nose catching full bloom silver lace vine up here on the pergola arch. I like the fragrance it puts off. Some people are opposed. I think this little honeybee likes it. Hi, buddy. You got a lot of work to do on there, bud. We actually have a grapeolini crepe myrtle shrub down here at the bottom. 
putting off a nice little splash of purple. You know I like my purple and whites. But this actually needs pruned back a little bit. I need to come in here with the hedge trimmer and just get a little walkway cut in here above the path. But it's so hard to cut it when it looks this good. And it's even blooming coming into the little room here where I have the tea set up. It's actually set up for a bird bath right now, but the blooms wrapped around the swing and the chairs in here, I think it looks really good. We're still getting some nice blooms and some fragrance out of the honeysuckle here, some white and yellow blooms. And the honeysuckle did really well at its job too, filling up its whole post. And of course the volunteer sunflower is adding a nice splash of color out here. And then in here on the left post we have the sweet autumn clematis. It's actually its first time doing a full bloom out here on this post. I actually used to have this on the post on the patio in the rose bed garden, but nobody liked it there. So I moved out here to the pergola where it can get some nice full sun. And it has over eight feet that it's allowed to go to the top of the pergola, but it didn't quite make it there this year. I'm pop. But it too has a nice fragrance coming off of it, and it has a beautiful white flower. It's just a sea of color in there. And I did see the bumblers out here. I can actually hear them buzzing. Oh, they're on this side. Hey, little bumbler. Got a lot of work to do in there too. So if I remember correctly, the bees are flying around with a positive charge and whenever they land on a flower, all the pollen actually has a negative charge. So they don't really have to do anything to collect it, it just sticks to them like static. So they can get a lot of work done quick. And now the zebra grass has also done its job this year. I wanted it to block off this wall and make that a nice private room on the inside where we have the swing. Now this isn't set up to use yet, I don't have the right support for that it's just hanging from the trellis for looks and i also want to get a hammock back here so i will have to prune this back a little bit but for now i'm just letting it grow we have some trumpet vine blooming right down here on the ground what happened it's like i have a nice long vine it was probably climbing the grass here and the weight of the blooms made it fall down that's a big cluster a hummingbird favorite we'll just leave that there Oh, pup. Life. Good puppy. This is the sweet autumn clematis, and it's probably the best fragrance going on right now. We have a couple more sunflowers blooming over here, as well as the red trumpet vine dropping some blooms on the pathway. But this blue star amsonia is beautiful over here. I love the soft foliage. It's like a giant fern, but better because it blooms. I really like it along the pathway, so whenever you walk by, you get a brush up against it. And just a quick peek back here, we do have some red dahlias blooming. Oh, they're actually falling over back here. And some more volunteer sunflowers, and the silver lace vine is peeking around the corner nicely. And the firelight hydrangeas here finishing up its bloom, turning into an autumn purple. Beautiful. Let's head on down to the vegetable garden before we finish up this tour. Come on, pup. Now, vegetables were not a big part of my growth this year. So whenever I say vegetable garden, I really mean pumpkin patch. Oh, it looks like we had another female flower open up today. Bees probably pollinated that for me. I'm just going to let everything pollinate now until we run out of warm weather here. We are getting some good growth here and have a decent sized plant. And she's in a healthy state putting on a lot of female flowers, trying to get a fruit down before the end of the season. Easy pup. Everything's opening up. We got another open flower by Echo Pup. That one just got pollinated today by the bees. Pretty much on every vine coming out here, we have a pumpkin on and growing, so hopefully one of these can take off. We do have something sinister happening in the middle here. I did look for bugs, I didn't see any, and I went in there and I actually dusted everything with the bug dust. The powdery mildew definitely started back there. I'm not even gonna waste time treating for that. We really don't have enough season left for that to matter. I'm not gonna waste the product. We're just gonna let nature take its course and hopefully she lets us get a pumpkin. Not pop. On a different note, the watermelon actually put on fruit. Look at this odd looking thing. We have a rotten looking watermelon here. The butt end didn't do too good, but it kept trying to grow. Pigs might like that. We also have another one over here that looks a little bit better. It's on a really small vine, but look at this beautiful little watermelon. That's a good looking jubilee. It's absolutely tiny. I'm not sure if it's going to put on any edible fruit though. The spoon is still green and the tendril's not dried up, so it's not time to harvest. And surprisingly enough, we had the Waltham butternut squash put on some fruit. Some aphids right there. 
But there's a bunch of started fruit in here, more than I was even expecting. This was a sacrifice plant, and it's doing the best at everything. And the gourd right next to it, I think it might be a snake gourd. It could be a birdhouse gourd. I haven't seen any fruit on it yet, but it's been putting on a lot of vine. Let's take a closer look at that. Any fruit over here? Oh yeah, there's one. That's a snake gourd right there. Looks like a long bean starting. If you grow them on the ground like this, you can get them to twist all different ways. And whenever you grow the snake gourd on the pergola and it dangles, you get long baseball bat style. But we got some growth here on the gourd, so maybe we can get something out of it. And the storm blew one of the legs of fabric down so you can see all the weeds that came up through. Huh, pup, what's Dabbles doing up there? You got a bird's eye view from there, bud? All right, come on, pup. All right, that's gonna be all for this one. I'm gonna feed the fish here in the outro. If you wanna keep following along with everything here at Wood Acres, make sure to subscribe down below. Hit that like button before you leave and you can see me and Echo on the next one. Thanks for watching. That thunder is rolling.